Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar um, on cloud platform management. Today here, we have our cloud solution specialist, John Garidis, and we also have our CPM analyst, Tien de Klerk. Just before um, I hand you over to them, I'm just going to quickly run through some housekeeping. Um, during the webinar, you will be muted, but can submit questions via the questions box on the right-hand side of your screen at any time. Uh, we will then um, leave a little bit of time at the end of the webinar where we can run through a bit of a Q&A session. So if you do have any questions, we can read them out. The webinar recording will be made available to you shortly after um, the webinar. And there is a very, very um, short survey at the end of the webinar. So if you could just fill this in, um, it gives us an indication of your feedback and it's much, much, much appreciated. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to John Garidas. Thank you so much. Okay, good morning and thank you for attending the webinar. Today, we're going to cover the Bytes Cloud, Cloud Platform Management Service, then do a demo of CPM and finally open the floor for your questions. But before we start with the Cloud Platform Management Service, what I would like to do is spend a few minutes talking about Bytes and specifically our Microsoft credentials. Bytes is the largest Microsoft partner in the UK with 38% Azure market share and with over 1.5 million of Office 365 users that have been deployed. Our capabilities span across Microsoft licensing, deployment services, and unique solutions that help customers achieve more for less. All Microsoft services are underpinned by the Cloud Solutions team, which I'm a member of, and we offer discovery, planning, architectural guidance, and data center transformation services. In addition, we offer managed services, which are underpinned by our OMS platform, and they offer 24 by 7 by 365 proactive, proactive support and service management. So let's um, uh, start with the cloud cost management. As I mentioned earlier, Bytes manages uh, almost 40% of the Azure spend in the UK, and our customers have got some common challenges that they need to be resolved. And if we uh, separate those challenges into separate areas, first one is reporting. Customers are asking for detailed uses reports that are easy to view and analyze. In terms, in terms of what Microsoft has to offer, there are several options, and these provide usage information only. And specifically, if you are an EA or a SKI customer, you can see graphs from the EA portal, and this offer high-level service summary by month, monthly totals for a year, and are embedded in the website. You can also, from the, the EA portal, do a CSV download of the report, but it requires some further work to make those reports useful. You can import them to a BI tool if you wanted to, but that again requires some BI uh, knowledge. There is a Power BI report a capability within the AI portal, but those reports are interactive and offer no customization. When it comes to pay as you go, MSDN, or open customers, they only get detailed CSV downloads they are not able to interact with those reports. In terms of cost visibility, customers want the ability to cross-charge Azure usage to different operational units, departments, or different uh, subsidiaries. They want to know who is spending what, when are they spending it, and whether it was expected or planned for. The Microsoft cost visibility is very limited. Then there is the cost optimization, Customers are asking if what they're spending in Azure has been budgeted for and if it offers best value for money. Microsoft offers two optimization options. One is the Azure Advisor, which is free, but only provides basic sizing recommendations and other advice around security best practices. And then, as you probably are aware, with the recent cloud in acquisition, they offer the cloud in premium uh, or enterprise solution which costs 1% of your customers' Azure spend and provides better VM sizing recommendation as well as storage optimization, but not licensing optimization, which again, and again, it uses Cloudin's own websites, which is not particularly easy to, to navigate. 
Finally, cost comparison. Customers want to know what the costs look, look like on different Azure agreements or in comparison to other vendors and whether they can optimize their Microsoft licenses. Before we built our solution, we carried out extensive market research and looked at what Microsoft as well as other competing technologies had to offer. What we found was that all these different technologies offered tools that pretty much are like for like. They have some great reporting capabilities, but none have the wider capabilities and value proposition that Bytes has historically provided for our customers. Specifically, the uh, spend optimization across the different Microsoft licensing uh, agreements, sizing and purchasing recommendation, visibility of renewal costs, cloud comparison, as well as customized reports. So what is CPM? CPM is a service that addresses all of the above customer challenges. In other words, we help customers understand their spend across all Azure agreements, help them with budgeting, cost assignment, assets, and forecast. It also helps them investigate changes, identified, identify unexpected spend variations, investigate this, and remediate. It also helps with optimization because as well as VM optimization offers licensing optimization, such as hybrid benefits, reserve instances, enterprise dev tests, switching VMs on and off, and therefore saving money. And equally important, it offers architectural and strategic advice as well as customized reports. We'll cover this during the demo. I just, before we go to the demo, I just wanted to show you a slide with uh, three of the reports. Um, and uh, the ones you can see is the one with the executive summary. And there is another one that offers a cost analysis over time. And the last one offers optimization recommendations. And that's the bar chart that you can see, it, you can see in that graph. So let's go into the demo. Okay. Right. So uh, this is a demo environment we created. And uh, as you can see, this customer spends is about 474,000 a year. So far, they have spent 422,000 pounds. And you can see, uh, based on the different size of fonts, what is their maximum spend. So the maximum spend seems to be on infrastructure. There's some uh, spend on storage. Is a little bit more on security, very little in fact. Uh, there is some on application, there is some on network, uh, and you can see overall what they're spending. Now, if you go to see uh, what, uh, what are the different data centers that they're using, primarily they're using uh, a Dublin, then there is a little bit in the UK, and uh, a little bit more in uh, Netherlands. If I go on the left-hand side, I can see what the spend is on the three largest consuming services, and those are infrastructure, storage, and recovery. And if I click on one month, for example, I can see that uh, they spend in uh, December 25,000 pounds on infrastructure, and they spend uh, in January about 24, so it's pretty standard, 24, 25K. Uh, and this really gives me an overview. What it also does, it gives me a forecast spend of the next month. So you can see so far in February, and the report was uh, uh, done on the 3rd of February. Uh, so far in February, we had spent 4,000 pounds, and the forecast for the remainder of, the of February is 34, and in March is 42. Let's go to the cost management. So cost management gives me an overview of how much this customer has spent for the duration of their agreement. They started back in uh, August 2015, and as you can see, they spend uh, about over a million pounds. In terms of storage, they spend uh, 280,000 pounds. In terms of uh, infrastructure, they spend the vast majority in that. And you can see the patterns uh, here. They started small, they increased it. There are some uh, peaks and troughs. And as you can see here, it's an interesting pattern because that indicates to me they're switching their VMs on and off. Let me just try to drill down on the infrastructure. If I drill down on the infrastructure, I can see that the vast majority is spent on um, uh, virtual machines. And if I click further, if I drill down more, I can see the pattern of what they're spending it on. So if I just expand on that, 
as you can see, it seems that A6VM is consuming the vast majority of uh, cost. There's also A4VM and there's A3VM. Um, I, please bear in mind that this is A6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I use this information to drill down and do what if analysis and uh, root cause analysis. So the next thing I, I want to do is I will go to the next uh, um, tab, which shows me the forecast and consumption. What you see here is that uh, in terms of my commitment remaining, it's for, I've got 49,000 pounds left, but the forecast for next month is 40, close to 42,000 pounds. And if you take the end of the following month, I'll be negative. In other words, I'll be in overage by 26,000 pounds. What uh, you can see here is also I've got two subscriptions and I've got different services, application, development, functions, SQL, etc. So if I want to see how much I'm spending on infrastructure, if I just type infrastructure here, sorry, I was typing the wrong keyboard, infrastructure, infrastructure, I can click on that and I can see the forecast. So the vast majority, as you can see, of the 40 or so K was going to be on infrastructure. And there's also, uh, if I clear that, there's also storage as well, uh, which, uh, which I know it was uh, uh, quite high as well. So storage, storage, and you can see the storage cost is about 18,000. So pretty much the infrastructure storage are making the uh, vast majority of spend. In this one, you can see the variation, uh, increases and decreases. Uh, you can see here when the customer applied some of the CPM optimization that their costs were reduced, although in terms of their consumption, it stayed pretty much the same in terms of the resources they were consuming. So they didn't reduce any of the resources, but the cost decreased. But um, let me try to, uh, to see the service growth over a period of time. And as you can see, there are some lines here. Uh, the red line is, uh, if I click on that, it shows me that it is infrastructure and it shows me the resource count over time. So you can see the customers put in a lot more resources and the infrastructure costs are increasing. The second graph here is the one that is, uh, if I hover over it, it shows me that the storage and the storage is increasing as well. I can see there's a forecast for additional storage increase here. So I can see the service growth. What I want really to do is I want to expand and see uh, that in more detail. So if I hover over here, I can see that uh, in uh, around uh, the middle 20th of uh, October 2016, they had a trough and then they started using uh, switching the VMs on and off. I just want to explore a bit further. So if I change that start date to be 26 uh, October, uh, let me just go there. Just try to, to make that October. Okay, so you can see uh, expanding this information. And, uh, and what you can see here, I just want to show you that the customer is switching their VMs every seven days. Yeah, switching them off the weekends. Can you see? Yeah, and then of course that has an impact of cost over time. Then the customer went into production, they did some more uh, changes into the environment. And then here again, they started uh, switching the VMs on and off. And that is really a good pattern because it shows you the customer is, is adopting change and optimization. What I want to, uh, to do here is I want to drill further down and see what services and what resources are consuming the vast majority of infrastructure costs. And um, in this uh, graph, I can see the different uh, um, spend. And I can see that infrastructure A6 VM is the biggest one here. Then there is another one, which is A4 VM. And then there is uh, a few others, D3. Uh, a, there's a D3 further down. But let me just try to understand that a bit more. So if I click on the A6 graph, I can see that there's a virtual machine. I can see there's an A6 VM. And I can see the different resources that are using it. But I also see the applications. So clearly, there's a Citrix application, there's some SQL, and there is some test, dev test environment. If I want to find out which one of those is consuming the most, I just need to click on that. And I can see that Citrix is spending over the time 117,000 pounds. Now, if I click on SQL, I can see that during the equivalent time, SQL was very little. Uh, so clearly, it's the Citrix application that is uh, consuming most of the services. Let's look at the environment. The environment is only test in terms of the cost that is uh, that A6 VM is using. And please remember, I'm focusing on the A6 VM. Now, what I want to do is I want to clear that 
and I want to investigate the application, which I know is Citrix. And if I click on that, I can see the different resources that are consuming Citrix. But at this point in time, I don't know which resource is consuming the most. So what I do is I just go to the next slide, which is the asset management. And that shows me the different assets under the different subscription names. And also tells me the resource count and the total cost. I'm interested in costs. So what I want to do is I want to filter that. And by clicking on that, you can see I filter from uh, low to high. And I go down to see the different services. You can see there's some SQL standard there. It's consuming 11,000 pounds. I'm just looking after the bigger numbers. And as you can see here, there's some storage. So there's a data management. There's geo redundant storage, which is 46,000 pounds. But locally redundant storage is the vast majority of spend of 183,000 pounds. In terms of infrastructure, again, I look at the, all the infrastructure that I have spanned over the time. And going down, you can see the biggest number by far is the A6VM, which shows me of 140,000 spend. So what I want to do is I want to click on that, drill down, and try to find out which resource is the one that's consuming the most. So A6VM, you can see the different resources that are consuming the, uh, the service. The biggest one by far is Custom Citrix Service 001. And this is the one that I want to investigate further. So I go to the Instance Finder, and I can search by this one, Custom. Oh, sorry, let me just type it in the Citrix. Citrix Service 001. Uh, it's further down, customer city service, 001, that's the one. And what you can see is that uh, it's an application, it's a Citrix application that you can see as well as A6 VM, it uses A4 VM, A5 VM, and the networking. And it shows me the cost over the period of time. If I just want to see how much this application spent last year, I just go to January 1st, 2017, to 31st, uh, December 2017 and as you can see I can see the total spend over uh, between July and December overall for Citrix. So this is really a root cause analysis I, as you know it's a very quick uh, overview to see what you can find out by investigating the resources that are consuming most of your money. But really what I'm sure you're all interested to see is the optimization if you remember on uh, the first or the second slide, I showed you that out of the 474 projected uh, spend, the customer has already spent 422,000 pounds and we've saved them 103 pounds of potential optimization savings. Obviously, you want to know how we achieved that. And this is really what I'm going to show you now. So the optimization recommendation what we're seeing here is the optimization recommendation and cost savings for one single month. So if you multiply that by 12, you would get the high figure of 103,000 pounds over a year. What that tells me is that I can save the customer 24.5% of their monthly cost. And uh, you can see the different windows. Uh, and this is split into three areas. The first one is reserve instances for non-Windows VMs. And you can see the different breakdown, you can see the saving for one year, uh, here, sorry, saving over three years. So you can choose. Then is the wind potential reserve instances windows savings, and that is a larger amount. And finally, you can use the hybrid use benefits for windows, which means you can save an extra uh, percentage, typically about 40% uh, on Windows VMs. That means that you would have to use some of your windows uh, core licenses that you, you, know, you might have software assurance. If you don't have that, it is all, always cheaper to buy those licenses with software assurance and then exchange them for uh, a, a Microsoft um, Windows services in Azure. What you see here is the different savings. So if I click on the hybrid benefit, you can see the hybrid benefit is £7,200. If you add the hybrid benefit plus the reserve instance over three years, you get to that number, which is 8,633, which matches this. And finally, the last graph, it shows you the cost comparison for December for the different size of VMs. 
And what I can do is uh, if I want to, to click on uh, uh, an A6PM, I don't know, I keep picking on A6PM, it's because I like it, isn't it? Is it there? Uh, perhaps, oh, I think they, uh, there it is, uh, A4, A5, where is it? Somewhere there. Uh, did I miss it? There, there we go. You can see uh, there's a bit of saving of hybrid use benefits. But let's look at the overall picture. What you see here, uh, let me try to explain this because it's important. So for December, what we see that the customer is actually paying this, the build cost. And as you notice, the build cost, what the customer is actually paying is less than list price. The reason for this is the cost, this customer has got an old agreement. As you know, it started back in 2015, 2015, and they're a public sector organization. So back in 2015, they were getting, uh, at that time, they were getting 40% discount of the list price at that time. So obviously, as the time has passed, the price have been increased. So if you take 40% out, plus the uh, as your price increases, you would see that if they were to start a new agreement today, that would have been the list price. However, if you applied hybrid use benefits, this is what they would pay. And if you then apply uh, reserve instances for one year or three years, you can see the cost will be reduced. So even, even if in their current environment, which is very heavily subsidized, you can see they can still make savings. And you can see the savings worked out on this side. It started with 8,000 pounds for hybrid benefit. Then adding the reserve instance over three years, it gives you the total amount of savings. Now, obviously, when the customer renews his agreement in, uh, in a few months time in 2018, they would be paying list price minus the savings we can achieve them, which will be even more than the 25% highlighted. So um, the demo has finished. Uh, hopefully, you understood how uh, we managed to achieve the savings. And what I want to do now is just uh, uh, go back to my presentation and uh, uh, explain a few things. So, um, so what, uh, what you can see so far is um, customers can identify a multitude of cost-saving measures that can quickly be enacted on and get ROI. So this is a, a graph from a different customer. And as you can see, they were increasing their spend and then they adopted CPM. At this point, you can see the cost starting reducing. And although they use the same resources, they didn't have to shut down any resources. The cost saving became apparent at this point. And it also shows you here as well. The green shows increasing costs, the red shows decreasing costs. But also what is really nice to see is this graph. It's a nice smooth graph that shows the customers in control of their spend. They have made a commitment and they're using that commitment in a linear fashion as they should do. We have seen a lot of customers that haven't adopted CPM and this graph will be all over the place. They will be committing, they will be using their consumption too early or they won't be using enough consumption, they will be left with money at the end of the term that they lose. Then the other thing I hope you understood from the presentation, from the demo, it is that the reports and the service is very quick to start using without any training. We provide you with a monthly reports, we provide you with custom reports, but also we give you a URL that you can log on and use the data to actually um, interact with that yourself like I did earlier on. And with the monthly reports, we visualize the savings, we give you advice and guidance how to implement this, and then you can achieve the savings that this customer has uh, achieved, uh, not only now, but also in the future. So the service comes in three tiers. The starter tier, which is what we offer to CSP customers, and that is really just provide you billing report and some cost saving overview. Uh, but again, this is only for CSP customers. Uh, the customers that uh, go that have an EA or a SKI, they opt for the advantage or the premium. Uh, also, some CSP customers that they're spending a lot of money in Azure want to have some optimization. So the advantage offers you some basic optimization as well as everything that the starter uh, service offers and it gives you detailed cost analysis and drill down capability that I showed you earlier on. And the premium service is the one that has the reporting optimization, it has detailed cost saving, but also offer customs, custom reports. 
And all the customers that have adopted this service are using custom reports extensively. They come to us and they say, we're planning to, to launch a new service. We estimate we need um, those servers. Uh, and could you please give us an analysis of what that would cost me? Pre-optimization and post-optimization. And we do that. We also offer architectural guidance and advice. And uh, the architectural guidance and advice is not only restricted to best practice, but also with a view in mind of cost savings. We are, we are really determined to make sure that customers get the best value for money using Azure. And finally, the customers that we have so far, and uh, we're signing some, something like five or six customers per month. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, some, uh, it's a mix of uh, public sector organizations and commercial organizations. And um, yeah, and that's it. Uh, I finished. If there are any questions, uh, let me know. I can see there are a few questions. So, um, so the question is, is this is Azure infrastructure right? And that is correct. It's the, the Azure infrastructure we're optimizing. And uh, it's not physical or on-prem um, customer own infrastructure. It's only what is in, in Azure. Obviously, we offer our other services pre pre migration to Azure, which are called uh, migration optimization services. And what we do is we run some scripts into your on prem infrastructure and saying if you lift and shift as is, there will be X amount. But if you lift, transform, and move to Azure, then there would be um, significant more savings. The second question is Does CPM only manage Azure services? Currently, yes but uh, it's in the roadmap to also cover AWS and uh, probably Google, but probably AWS is going to be uh, the one that we're going to offer uh, soon. Uh, the next question is, uh, uh, is CPM a bytes only reporting service? Yes, that is correct. It's our own IP. We developed it, we service it, and we maintain it and support it. How current is the, so the next question is, how current is the data being reported on? Is it live? Uh, is, it, uh, is there a delay? Uh, Cloud seems to work on a two day uh, behind. So what I'll do is let me pass you to uh, Tian. Tian? Excuse me. Um, so currently we are running two days behind as well. And the reason for that is Microsoft's data itself is refreshed. They run a few hours behind. And the aim of the report is to have entire days to report on. So it's better to report on an entire day than half a day because it shows incorrect falls in data and so on. So that's why it runs two days behind. We run two days behind as well. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, John. Thank you, Tian. Um, yeah, great. So if you do have any other questions that you might think of later on, um, please feel free to either reach out to your Bytes account manager or um, email tell me more at bytes.co.uk um, and we'll, um, we'll be able to get the um, answer over to you as soon as possible. If you are interested in our CPM service, reach out to your Bytes account manager um, and we can get a demo um, arranged for you. Thanks very much, everybody.